So welcome again. A physics lesson. In the former lesson, we introduced the topic heat transfer. It is what we shall be continuing with in this lesson. Uh, we discussed the factors affecting heat transfer uh, for several conductors. We said that heat is the form of energy which flows from one material to another due to temperature difference. Therefore, two bodies together, one at a higher temperature than another, then it will flow from the hotter object to the cooler one. That is what we call heat transfer. By modes of either movement of electrons or vibration of particles. <clears throat> That's how it is transmitted from one end to another within a given conductor. Before we go to transmission of heat in liquids, allow me to mention something called lagging. Lagging. I know you've heard this term. When we were dealing with quantity of heat, whereby we said a calorimeter should be well lagged. So lagging is the concept of coating a conductor with a non conductor or with 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 a with an insulator so that it is not conducted away because an insulator is a material which does not allow conduction of it when you coat a conductor using an insulator then it means it will be conducted within the conductor but it won't get out into the surrounding because you are coating the conductor with an insulator and the insulator does not allow the flow of heat energy. Therefore, it is the concept of coating a conductor with an insulating material. An insulating material or simply an insulator to prevent loss of heat to prevent loss of heat therefore you find if you have a conductor here if you have a conductor here then you find uh, this is the hot end and this is the cold end the cold end you find that it is flowing using the, the lines of heat flow. So in this case, they can be able to come straight when you coat this surface with an insulator. With an insulator or a lagging material. Therefore, we had said that from the hot hand towards the cold hand, the lines of each flow, the lines of each flow, lines of each flow. So you find, we said they, they move such that they are emanating from this hot end to the cold hand, but they move in such a way that they want to diverge. From the hot end they want to diverge from the hot end they want to diverge therefore you find with the time because it is getting lost to the surrounding it is not a hundred percent the heat supplied here which will be absorbed by the other end and so to prevent this effect of losing heat we can cut here we can cut with an insulator a material which won't won't allow the heat to flow away. So it cannot exit through a lagging material, which is a good insulator. It will exit through. Therefore, a lagging a material using an insulator enables it to be efficiently transmitted from a hot object to a cold one. We have uh, water pipes. Water pipes, which carry 
water from uh, from boilers you fight we have big boilers mosoi industries and the water after it has been boiled there are the iron pipes we have the iron pipes which transmits the water from boilers so these are big boiler containing water so if the water is transmitted using iron pipes iron is a good conductor of heat therefore because this material is a good conductor heat from the water can can be conducted into the surrounding and you find a lot of heat energy is lost as water transmits through the iron pipe into where it is being channeled to therefore before water is conveyed to the desired destination a lot of it gets lost because it's a conductor to curb that problem then the iron pipes are coated the iron pipes are coated they are coated with an insulating material for example we have a material called uh, we have a material called uh, let me use asbestos we have asbestos material which is the best insulator to cut these pipes it's used to ensure that it is not lost into the surrounding therefore because it can be lost into the surrounding from the service of a conductor then we use the concept of lagging to prevent heat losses so now we can look at a uh, thermal conductivity in liquids thermal conductivity in liquids let me get uh, the duster thermal conductivity in liquids now thermal conductivity in liquids in liquids so we want to check whether liquids can also transmit heat as we've seen metals and other solids can conduct heat energy we want to see whether liquids can conduct so what we need is a, a boiling tube we need a source of heat we need water we need water wax coated with wire beads coated with uh, yeah with wire beads coated with wire beads therefore this how you set up the experiment you have your boiling tube then this is point a and inside here we have your wax which is coated with wire beads then you apply it here you apply it there then inside the boiling tube you have water you have water inside so the wax is here we want to see whether by heating this point okay this is glass a glass made boiling tube should be specific it's a boiling tube made of glass therefore what happens here when you heat this one for some moment you realize that realize that uh, water at point A at point A starts boiling while while uh, the wax remains unmelted remains unmelted 
this is a calculation that after heating water at one point heat is not being transferred to the other parts it's good to note this means that water is a poor conductor water are generally liquids uh, conductors of heat energy they are poor conductors of heat energy it's good also to note that it Glass is also a poor conductor. Remember we said there are not all solids which conduct heat energy. Things like glass and plastic and rubber, they don't conduct. Therefore, glass is one of the poor conductors. It's a poor conductor of heat. And hence, minimizes. chances of conduction of heat. Therefore, we want to ensure that during this experiment, heat does not get conducted by the material containing the water. We want to purely test the water, whether the water can transfer heat. So we are using a glass, which is a poor conductor, so that it doesn't transmit the heat itself to this point where we have the wax. Otherwise, the, the experiment will be biased. The experiment will be biased. Again, it's also important for us to note that uh, the wax is coated. It's coated. So that it doesn't float. You know? It is coated with wire gate so that it remains here. Otherwise, it would float and it may bring itself at the point where the heat is. And when we see heat, the wax melting, we might think it's because water has conducted the heat where it is not the case. It is the wax itself coming here. So to avoid the wax itself moving to where the heat is, then we coat it with wire gaze. And the coated with wire gaze, it remains sinked it sinks uh, permanently it sinks permanently therefore generally we are saying that liquids do not transmit heat let me submit the reason why liquids do not transmit uh, heat why they don't conduct heat why they don't conduct heat In liquids, or can say liquids are poor conductors of heat because of the large of the molecular distances. Compared with solids. Therefore, we say in solids, this solid has particles packed together, very closely together. In the kinetic theory of matter, we saw how liquids are close, solids of substances or the, the atoms, the molecules, closely packed together. So, once heat is applied, uh, the atoms near the source of heat, they gain energy. And once they vibrate, they immediately transmit heat to the neighboring. But for solids, for liquids, sorry, we are saying for liquids, there are large intermolecular spaces. A molecule is sparsely distributed. They are they are not close to one another. Therefore, this material or the, this molecule can gain heat and even if it will vibrate, it is very far from the neighboring one. And therefore, it may transmit very little heat or no heat at all. So, because of the large intermolecular distances, intermolecular distances are the distances from one molecule to another. 
because they are large, then a molecule might not vibrate and affect a neighboring one. Unlike in solids, because they are closely packed or the intermolecular distances are small, then, uh, then for solids, they can vibrate, affecting a neighboring particle or atom or molecule, and hence the chain of transmitting uh, the heat is created. Again, we can say that in liquids, it's only molecules. There are no free or mobile electrons which also aid in uh, transmission of it therefore conduction is poor in liquids due to large in the molecular species so thank you very much for following the lesson we will meet for convection in the other lesson you can share our link subscribe like on the lessons. Thank you very much.